Imagine waking up one day and writing a beautiful fast test for your database, a fast test that can uncover all kinds of unlikely interactions and tricky bugs. You add this marvelous test to your evergreen CI, and all of a sudden the CI becomes unusable, because now every fifth pull request fails randomly due to a bug introduced six months ago. This is the problem that my colleagues at Targetable and me, Matt Clark, had to deal with, and we want to share our experience with the rocket science of simulation testing. As far as this talk is concerned, coverage-guided fuzzing, property-based testing, and deterministic simulation testing are all just different names for the same thing, and I will be using the terms interchangeably. I also assume that you already know these techniques and won't be explaining them. I also assume that you already follow in the non-rocket science rule of software engineering. Your CI system advances the tip of the main branch to a new commit hash only when that specific hash passed all the tests. The problem is connecting the two together. Because deterministic simulation testing takes time to discover failures, it is a poor fit for GitHub Actions shaped CI pipeline that simply gates pull requests before they get into main. A new kind of infrastructure is needed. This is the key insight. Traditional testing is edge triggered. When a new commit comes in, you run all the checks in finite amount of time, they either pass or fail, and you can use the result to gate the main branch. In contrast, fast testing is level triggered. A fuzzer is running continuously. It maintains a set of currently failing seeds, and the set is updated asynchronously with respect to code changes. This is what we want the fuzzing process to look like. A fuzzing machine clones the repository, fuzzes it for a bit, reports failures, and then, crucially, loops. If a main branch is quiescent, the fuzzing is concentrated on a single commit, fuzzing it again and again and again. If the main branch advances rapidly, different commits are tested. Before fleshing out the code for the loop, let's apply data-oriented design principles and think about the shape of data produced by the fuzzing process. We are storing a list of failing seeds. Each record is a commit hash to identify the code and a specific fuzzer input. Normally, fuzzer input is a large string of random bytes, but I suggest using a U64 PRNG seed instead. A short, copy-pastable seed is easy to DM to your colleague, and this is relatively more important than minimization. To make the record more useful, let's add some metadata. First, commit timestamp can be taken directly from Git. It is stable and reproducible. It is used to discard records for old commits. Don't fear forgetting the old failures. They will be rediscovered in the new code just fine. Then. The branch name is useful when you test pull requests in addition to main. The command line is interesting. Strictly speaking, it is redundant and can be derived from the name of a fuzzer and the seed. But for the user experience, it is critical that you don't have to piece together the command line yourself and can just copy-paste a reproducible one-liner. Next, we record the start and end times of a particular seed run. This serves two purposes. First, you can check that your fuzzers have been running recently. Second, this allows for coarse-grained minimization. Seeds that failed faster are simpler. Finally, we want to record some passing seeds as well. No failures and 10 successes is different from no failures and a million of successes. Recording every successful seed is redundant, so we allow OK records to stand for a count of our OKs. Putting everything together, we get the following seed record, that's real production code. Our state is then a list of such records. Now, we can implement a natural merge operation on two lists of records, which keeps the most interesting seeds and discards redundant and obsolete ones. It can be implemented as a one-pass sort, merge, and deduplicate algorithm, like the one in LSM compaction. Here are the rules for merger. Keep only the latest and commit timestamps. For each commit fuzzer pair, keep at most M seeds. Prefer failures to successes, prefer fast failures, and merge successes by adding the accounts together. Note that the total amount of seeds we keep is bounded by a constant, which is actually pretty nice. Still, we record a lot of seeds, and it is helpful to summarize the most important one for the human. Such a summary can be concisely represented by a single HTML table. We can see here one record per fuzzer and pull request pair. Successes are green. Failures are red. Note the copy-pastable command line, which helps debugging the failures. 
The source code for this visualization lives in the main repository and is easily hackable. It is deployed as a simple static page. Now that we know what the data are and how to usefully show them to a human, let's generate some seeds. This is our rough idea for the Python loop again. The reality will be more complex. We want to cache compiled code, we want to fetch new pull requests, and we want to do that fancy merging of seeds. This code will change a lot, and redeploying it on fuzzing machines every time will be a pain. We solve the redeployment problem using a pattern from the Erlang language, the universal server. Here it is. The code to orchestrate continuous fuzzing, the cfo.zig, is a part of the main repository. We don't deploy this code directly. Instead, we deploy a seed script that clones the repo, runs the CFO for 30 minutes, and loops. When we update the orchestration logic, it is automatically redeployed within 30 minutes to all the servers. Two things to note. First, POSIX process management API is bad, so you'll need to use unshare to prevent leaking processes. Second, transient network failures are a thing, so you need to retry, but only after a delay. So, what is the actual continuous fuzzy orchestration logic? It is simple, just a bunch of independent concurrent loops. Every 10 minutes, we check for new fuzzy tasks by fetching the main branch and any open pull requests. Every second, we start new fuzzy processes until the CPU is fully saturated. Likewise, every second, we reap finished fuzzers and add their seeds to the in-memory list. And every five minutes, we merge the local list of seeds with the remote one and upload the new results. The fun thing here is that no async programming is necessary. A simple polling loop that ticks every second does the job fine. So now we are running this C4 loop on, say, 100 of machines continuously. We need some sort of a distributed database to hold the discovered seeds. Can you guess the name of a database? My favorite database, apart from Tigerbito, is JSON MutexDB. So I use a distributed OCC version of it, a JSON file in a Git repository. We already have to use Git to fetch the code, so we might as well reuse it as our database client. The logic is simple. Clone the database repository, merge in the new seeds, commit the result, and retry in case of a merge conflict. And that's basically it. Let's put everything together. Long running, randomized testing is fundamentally level triggered. The state of the fuzzing is a set of commit hash seed pairs, which identifies failures for recent commits. This set can be conveniently stored in a JSON file in an auxiliary Git repository. A bunch of continuously running fuzzing machines populates the set with seeds they discover. The logic for everything from working with git json db to weighing the fuzzers against each other is specified in the main repository as well. Worker machines then run an auto-update loop. Visualization for the set of seeds is a simple single-file HTML app with a smidgen of JavaScript, which is also conveniently stored in the main repository and deployed as a static website. Once you have a similar infrastructure in place, you might make a reasonable progress towards the low of zero, the actual goal here, having no known fast failures. That is still going to be very, very hard, and it will take years. So good luck, and thank you for watching. Have success with your fuzzing.